Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Apex Show. Today we have a very important topic that we are going to be talking about and that's financial management or essentially managing your own finances. I just really want to share a few very important pieces of advice that I hope or could possibly wish that I've picked up when I was way younger than right now currently. And essentially, like, it's not just about how much money you earn, but it's also how well you manage them uh, in terms of achieving certain goals that you have. Because there are many people out in the world who are just earning so much money, but they can't really keep them. And that's kind of a like a big, big pity. So first thing first, there's one very great book that really explains this kind of get, and that's uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, I mean, he's a really good, good author, but um, one thing that I would be really uh, cautious in terms of this book is just really the hate that he puts on the educational system. Like, definitely the educational system is, is bound to be um, updated, but um, just, just don't undercut it. And, um, like, it's it's very important to educate yourself, but that, that's very, like the thing that where I would summarize essentially the whole point that I tried to make. So, uh, in terms of financial education, it's... It's very important to manage your finances accurately and just keep track of your finances. I'll share a few habits that I have or that I'm using in order to just keep track of my finances and um, how I'm still able to maybe like save 70 to 80 percent of, of everything that I've earned um, to just don't spend money on stupid stuff. So I guess let's just dive, dive right in and and um, catch a few points that I really want to make. The first one is... Um, the first point is that like earning more money is very important. Uh, you have all these different gurus out in the internet who are just telling you that you shouldn't, you should skip your m- Monday cappuccino. You should just save as mu- much money as you can. But okay, you just like zero can be just so far away. You can only get to zero, like earn, like spending zero dollars a month. You just essentially like. Z- you can decrease your costs only so much. And that's the same thing in business. Like there are all these people super obsessed about decreasing costs in business, but they aren't really focusing on increasing the revenue. And I would say like, that's the same, like definitely like decrease. It's great to decrease costs even in your personal life, but just don't decrease the cost uh, and, and sacrifice revenue in, in turn. Like revenue is way more important than costs. And, and profitability. So just, so just be very cautious about making certain decisions that can undermine your profitability and even your revenue. So yeah, just, just first one, it's great to be very frugal with your expenses, but at the same time, don't make decisions that would sacrifice your revenue or profits. You're trying to grow. You, you, you don't want to stay earning the same amount of money the next year or the next decade. You want to move forward. Like you want a 10x, you want a 100x, you want a freaking 1000x, even more. So spending two euros on a coffee in a coffee shop every single day isn't a thing that's going to make you a big difference. <laughs> you, you like there's even the saying, I'm, um, like I, I heard it somewhere, but you just can't save yourself up to becoming a billionaire. You just can become a billionaire by actually selling something and creating something. And that's the thing. You just need to, go into offensive, not defensive. You need to be an offensive player and that's that's the biggest part. So first one, mind revenue and how revenue is important. The second one, uh, find the things that you bring bring you the most pleasure, um, essentially that are maybe also aligned with your long-term goals um, that you can spend the money on. So for example, if I look on myself, like where I'm currently spending most of my money that I have, like the first one is... Um, like essentially, yeah, accommodation. I'm not paying that much for accommodation, uh, maybe a bit more. Um, in terms of Vienna, um, it's not that expensive at all. Uh, and in terms of where I'm living, I'm essentially living in a very nice and upscale neighborhood. Um, and the reason why I'm living still here, even though like my apartment is kind of very small, the reason for that is I, I have very high utility in terms of, okay, I have a gym here that I can use, a very good gym. And at the same time, I have a grocery store right, right underneath where I live. So I can go and pick up some groceries anytime I need, uh, which is essentially like 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, 10 meters from where I live. It, it's just not that, not that it's close. It's just right in the, almost in the same building. And the third thing, uh, since I'm at the university, my university is also very close. It's just... 
maybe like I just crossed the road and I'm essentially at my university. It's maybe like 100 meters, which is like 90 yards and I'm in my school. So um, it, it's, it's not that far away. Um, and that's like the highest utility for me. Uh, in terms of spending on other other things, food, um, maybe like this is a very important thing. I usually don't eat out even now. I just train myself like not to eat out and not spend money on eating out. But there are uh, further reasons why I don't eat out. The first one is that um, I, I'm a big fitness guy and I treat myself and my body with very high respect in terms of what I'm putting in, inside my body. And there are a few big negatives of eating out if you're trying to pretty be shredded and if, uh, in terms of like going to restaurants um, and they're like just uh, restaurants I, I just have so many different reasons I'm not eating out in terms of going to restaurants the first one is time I just don't have the time uh, you don't and I, I, I tell this also to you you don't have time to spend one hour every single day waiting for food or maybe 30 minutes you just don't they're just Whatever you're trying to achieve, you can just utilize this time so much better than just waiting for food. That's the first thing. The second thing is that um, in terms of macros, like in restaurants, they never give you that much protein and they always give you like way more fat and and everything else. And it's just like the, you cannot really control the macronutrients of what you're putting inside, which means that you cannot really, uh, if you're very focused on, on, on fitness as I am, I'm not really focused, but just really try to be shredded and, and being a shredded entrepreneur not being like a one of those weirdos on wall streets who has who is obese and okay he's earning one million a year but it's just like okay i'm i'm super fat uh, so um it's it's uh, that's the reason why i don't need their like macros waiting time and also essentially like okay price um i don't really care that much about our price but i just really care about okay like, i just need to wait for that i just hate waiting for anything and the third thing is that macros. Uh, so instead of that, what I do, um, we have a shop at my university and I, I just always go to the shop, uh, like a grocery store. I just go there. Uh, usually how I work right now is that I do intermediate fasting. I fast until 12 or 2 p.m. Uh, my last meal, for example, my last meal today was 5 p.m., which means that the next meal for me will be tomorrow, 12 p.m., which means like in the next, like maybe... 14 hours or 16 hours um intermediate fasting is great because it allows you to be more focused you just don't have have to eat all the time i just feel that it's one of the greatest things i actually only started doing that like three weeks ago i already tried it out maybe like three years ago or four years ago but now i just got back to it because i'm i just switched focus from being super fitness oriented all the time i just like put fitness on the back burner and just really trying to grow the business and everything so for that reason i'm just like okay uh, let's try it out again and it works very great so enables me to be focused as as never before so and and when i'm eating it's just i just go to the grocery store essentially at like maybe 12 and it's a, it's a normal basic grocery store it's nothing special you just go there and what i do i usually just grab like three three of these protein milks which can take 35 grams of protein each so i just grab three of those i um what else do i do i just grab a sandwich like a ham sandwich with with potato not potatoes tomatoes cucumber and like it's we have i mean like i just can't say that we have just su such a great food here in vienna where i'm living at it's just like the life quality here it's it's out of the it's out of the earth so i eat that and then i also grab a protein bar um I just like eating protein bars. Like that's the, f I, I just like them, and um, they have a f like kind of good macros. Barbells protein bars. I usually eat those, and then I grab like a bunch of apples. Usually like ten apples. Um, yeah, I eat, eat, eat a lot of fruit because it satiates you and it's great. So I usually eat this, and then um, I mean that's it. I maybe grab more. Um, sandwiches or stuff and then in the evening i usually have like either blueberries or like just different kinds of berries because they satiate you like a lot like a huge bag maybe like half a kilo or a kilo of kilo, kilo of blueberries or berries and then also um i eat either just meat like pure meat chicken breast or um yeah buy 
they have like these pre-made packs with like chicken meat and vegetables mixed together like frozen you just put it onto a pan and within the next 10 minutes it's gonna be like really good so i usually do that and you can see like my diet is pretty simple and it's high performance oriented and i like even i structured it the way that it enables me to kind of save a lot of things but it's super healthy at, at, at the same time so in terms of food like i mean the only thing for me if we would be like on six figures a month and like super scaling and i, I would like to treat it even more i would hire a personal chef which i'm gonna do but i'm not doing that right now it's just not one of the highest priority tasks we are hiring other people <laughs> right now uh for different more important positions like video editors and stuff like that uh even for different projects so it is like not the biggest ball or like your ball for me right now and yeah so this is the first thing um yeah spending money on the on the things you like so essentially like this is the corner so of my whole performance just just having food and being able to perform at very high levels so spending some money on this is very important for me um, but then essentially all the other expenses that i have equipment very high expenses but that's like kind of reinvested into business, like camera, drone, like tripods. So you don't even see like microphone and all the like the setup that I have here right now. Uh, latest iPhone, like all of these different features that enable me to create content at, at such a high level at what we're doing right now. And you're like just scraping really the, uh, just really not even where I really want to be with everything. So uh, like there's just so much, such room for expansion uh, that we'll still need to tackle. So that's that's still like room for improvement. Uh, the second thing, what else? What else did I want to want to mention in terms of? Uh, yeah, expenses like education. Education is a big one for me. Uh, this year I spent like five k, maybe even more, on courses and everything else because you just need to acquire information from different kinds of people and information and the information on YouTube. I mean, like you just need to direct access to the people who are doing the stuff you're doing in order to be just understand stuff better like for me education is also travel like traveling but not travel like just just don't do this like don't buy a vacation and go to thailand for 2k don't do that never do that um just just i'm gonna probably shoot a different ver video or just different podcast version about how to go actually and travel but travel somewhere else like just go out and venture i was always interested in silicon valley and this year february i made the decision like okay, I'm just going to go and just spend the whole February in the U.S. And that's what I did. I went to New York, Miami, uh, even New Jersey, and then went to Las Vegas, San Francisco, and L.A. Now, and I've seen it all. I've been to Silicon Valley and like all of these big tech companies that you have. I've been to headquarters of Apple, um, Steve Jobs' garage, where he actually created the whole Apple. I've been to uh, ChatGPT, Twitter, like imagine all of these big companies, Stanford, I've been to all of these places because I just wanted to grab the energy, meet some people. And that's what I did. I actually been to uh, Stanford MBA graduate program. I actually uh, had the chance to interview and spend some time, quality time with a, a psychologist who's working there, who's actually interacting with the MBAs and just trying to ensure that all of the MBAs has a, have a really good, uh, like essentially mindset and everything else so we just spent a lot of time together he was actually the guy who told me like oh, you should really prepare for an MBA for Stanford and that's the reason why I really spent the whole summer trying to figure out how I'm gonna do my GMAT and stuff like that <laughs> uh, so um, that was kind of kind of kind of um, kind of cool so yeah like just traveling and doing the stuff and even like I made a second trip to the US where I spent there another almost two months which was now, and I went to Hawaii, where I, where I spent my time with, um, like, essentially a very intelligent person. Um, we were kind of, like, co-working together. He has a villa, like, a huge house in Hawaii, Oahu, like, right next to Pearl Harbor, and he told me, like, okay, I should come. So I, I went there, and uh, he's, a, he's a guy, he's working for all these big tech companies, like, Imagine Apple, Microsoft, um, not sure else like Amazon and like doing some tech stuff there also in the education education business or educational side, and um, 
yeah, essentially I just networked with him and, and like we, we really talked about multiple different things and facets together. And then again, went to Nevada, uh, like California, Utah, Arizona, then back to Nevada, back to California, San Diego, LA, and then flew back to Orlando where I had a conference. And essentially that was an online business conference where there were guys essentially like you just feel like you're a big fish you're earning five figures a month and you're like feel like big king but you go there and you see people who are earning 10 million dollars a month and even more like guys who are exiting their companies for tens of millions of dollars um every single year and and that's like just and you're speaking with them like normal people and those are not like some advanced entrepreneurs those are guys who didn't finish even high school and and they're 20 years old and you're just speaking to them and they're just on a such a high level and and you just feel like okay like like it's alex hormozy said it in one of his podcasts i'm not sure if you know alex hormozy you should definitely go and tune in into his podcast but he he said that the reason why you should invest into education is that because when you meet uh, when you even go to these live seminars is that it just overshoots your limits to such a high level because you just see people who are no smarter than you doing such big things with their life and with their businesses that you just break all the limiting beliefs that you have of what things you think you can do and actually can do. And that's like just the biggest breaker for me. It's it, You just you can learn just so much by watching YouTube videos, but you won't learn the whole thing. You just need to go and actually see those people and, and network with those people. And for online business, still like the best place is United States. Even though in, in terms of United States, uh, it's a great country, but uh, it has a lot of problems. But I mean, when I've been there, it's like, okay, a lot of problems, a lot of solutions. There's still so many things that could be solved. And that's essentially like why we need entrepreneurs, why we need intelligent ent entrepreneurs. And that's essentially what we are doing here, like just equipping you with all the facets you need to know, at least from my current perspective. Or if I'm not really, or if I don't really feel that I would be the best person to for you to if I really wouldn't think that I would be the best person that could give you the best advice or essentially teach you the things that you would need to in order to get to the next level, if I would know about the person and I know a lot of people and mentors, you know, personally and uh, maybe some, some books, et cetera, et cetera, I would just recommend you that resources or those resources, which I'm doing pretty often. And and it's just about it. Like, as I already said, like, my main goal is to equip you. And my main goal is, like... like you, definitely the reason for all, all the like every every business needs to be profitable in order to work and that's essentially even what i'm doing i have a very profitable businesses and even in the future if you're doing events and this 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 essentially all these events will be profitable because that's the reason for every single business just go further and expand you can't really expand if you don't have resources so that's the reason why non-profit is not the best way how you can go about things you just need to okay be extremely profitable in order to have more resources to hire more people to provide more jobs to people because <clears throat> the main job of an entrepreneur that is very important to 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 think about is to provide jobs and if you just think about it, like you create a business, you're generating sales and you actually provide a job for someone else. Like you essentially pay him one or two or three or five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month to do certain tasks. And you provide him with the job. You provide him with the job, the opportunity the, to enhance, to just work on his craft. You do that and the opportunity wouldn't exist without you so essentially like that's the other way of looking around at, at all the things you're doing you're actually not only taking from people by selling them stuff but you're also giving to your employees and providing with the opportunity to live the lifestyle they want because you're actually working for a company and ask a person if they're earning 8k a month if they feel really depressed about how much money they're earning like you can pretty much earn like you see you, you can pretty much do majority of the things you wanted to do in your life with that money so um like ba all your basic needs are pretty much met yeah but we were jumping far ahead from this so I, like i mean education is, is a big one for me and even the next year uh, my goal for education um i'm spending two two grand on another conference in in april and that's going to be happening in, in Miami. I'm going back to Silicon Valley. Um, 
where I'm going next, uh, like just touring the world, India, and, and just different countries because I'm exploring and meeting different contacts. So, I mean, like the expenditure will be kind of high, but at the same time, it's just reinvestment and travel is one of the big reinvestments you can make. And yeah, another one is like fitness. I don't really compromise on my fitness. Like when I need to go to the gym, I just go to the gym. But on the other hand, like where do I really try to take this money away from is like, for example, clothes. Like just, I just really feel that buying clothes all the time is pretty stupid. Um, it's just really trying to fill the inner hole with other things. I just really don't really think that that's the best way how you can go about things. For example, I like a few years, a few years ago, I bought the Gucci shoes and they cost me like 350 bucks like euros and they're just so really bad like they're just so freaking bad uh, all, all like anytime i wear them my i have just bruises on my legs and uh, like it, it just hurts so much uh and i bought a similar model to those gucci shoes and it, it's just converse and those converse uh shoes were like 60 dollars which is like 55 euro, 55 euros and they're so much more comfortable they even look better actually <laughs> and it's just like that is the difference so you don't really need to spend that much on fashion you can have just a simple black shirt that costs you nothing if you like the main thing is that i really even always tweeted it like this if you just all the people try to hide their own bodies uh by wearing different kinds of clothes but actually if you just work on yourself and work on your body if you work out for three years and get into actual good physique it doesn't really matter if you're jacked like i mean it doesn't really matter if you're in a shirt if you have in a tank top if you're in a long sleeve short sleeve if you're that brown that brown i mean you you look great <laughs> you just can't look really bad if you're jacked and like that's the main point like just get jacked first and then you just don't really need that that big of a budget on on spending on different kinds of kinds of things uh different thing or maybe like thing that i decided to eliminate less uh, is alcohol parties going out and that's even with the realm of focus if you want to create something great you just can do all of this stupid stuff and even in terms of demographics of people you meet in those bars like you just i'm not sure about you but you just won't meet any great like-minded people unless those like all ups those bars are like upscale bars somewhere in dubai you won't won't meet people that will anyhow change your life so not not really worth it and then entertainment of any kind, I would just eliminate it at all. Like just, you just, if you have a TV, PlayStation or anything else, like just the first thing that will change your life forever and that I bet you, you need to do it right now, just go and sell it right now. Just go ahead and sell it. That's the first thing. If you do that, your, your life will be changed in the next few years, like for sure. You stop consuming and you start creating. That's the biggest step you need to do in order to just get forward and just get moving forward towards what you actually want to make of your life, what you want to create, who you want to become. That's the first step. You just need to sell, like, like just get rid of all of the stuff that's making you consume more stuff. Uh, even with food deliveries, you just don't need deliveries. I mean, not sure how far away you're living from anything, but just go and buy groceries one time per week. Just save your time go buy groceries go buy healthy groceries i wouldn't depending on where you live i wouldn't spay, spend much time live like cooking stuff that's not that worth it i hate cooking because it just takes more time and focus that's the reason why i just always go and buy a sandwich buy this this, this. but healthy sandwich it's so just a healthy one i'm very privileged to be living in vienna where we have like healthy uh, two bucks and you have a really good sandwich which is kind of like okay you can't really get that anywhere else but just be inventive and just try to save time and save save money time is very important a lot of people try to save money but they don't save time and okay you will earn 100k but and you can lose 100k but if you spend one year doing some stupid stuff like cooking throughout the whole life you can just you just can't get that time back so just don't do this and don't spend spend your time on stupid stuff so uh the financial management what other financial tools we can really talk about? Um, prioritizing experiences over things. That's a big one for me. Like just essentially getting the experiences with people. 
Uh, if you really want to like award yourself for certain things to spend the money on experience, for example, for me, when I was in the US, I just didn't buy that much stuff. I just bought one shoes because I don't really need that much stuff. Actually, I always travel just with a backpack. I hate traveling with anything else. You just need to keep focused. I just travel with one backpack and that's it. Like that was essentially my life for two months. Um, I mean, it's cheaper, but for me, more importantly, it's just th that sense of freedom. <laughs> Whenever you want you can just take all of your things and move somewhere else i'm just okay i want to spend a different night in bali i want to like that was actually in bali my a friend of mine told me like i should just go with him to bali and, and just take a backpack and no luggage i was just are you really sure i just like no way how i'm doing that but I'm, in the end i did that and it changed my life forever because now i just pack my things and go wherever i want and I essentially i just don't need anything you just feel so free do whatever you want you have everything you need you have a, like like your notebook charger tripod camera you're pretty much it and yeah it's, it's just a, such a such a great feeling just to be able to live life uh collecting experiences instead of collecting things and if you think that i'm not materialistic then you're on the wrong side of the coin because i'm super materialistic uh, i just like love to go to LA and hang out around 25 million dollar villas and just love to drive uh SRTs 800 horsepower cars that I did this May in Dubai where I actually paid for the whole trip for my very good friend who is also a videographer who shoots videos so I took him to Dubai we rented a 800 horsepower car and we just drove it on the desert and just uh, drifted on the desert and just did then did a bunch of crazy stuff and also when I was say 18 or 19 i believe i just rented a lambo and just drove 200 kilometers an hour and just did zero to 100 and just do some, did some crazy stuff and okay i paid for an experience and i'm super materialistic i like to earn money uh, i'm like even doing this like from the long term okay well i'm doing this i'm doing this also to earn money but from the long term it's just long-term vision to change the world whatever uh just just to be really clear about everything yeah i'm maybe telling that yeah, I want to change the world, but okay, as I already said, like all businesses that really want to survive and sustain themselves for the long term and that also want to have enough resources to pay for all the talent that they need in order to expand, they need to be super profitable. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to do that. So that's essentially my goal, provide jobs. For jobs, we need more revenue. Essentially, very simple, simple equation. So... Um, expand conquer like pay for experiences that that's the first thing and uh like that's a very important thing and a factor to to just mind just not search for materialistic stuff because then you have people that buy actually a car spend all the money that they have and buy a 80k 80,000 euro car when they're when they're earning 80,000 euros a year or dollars a year which means that they spent all their income for one car then they're pretty much stuck with that one car and if something happens you like if they crash it and that would be really uh like a, that could ruin their life and they would be feeling very sad but on the other hand if she buy a, a cheap car uh, essentially like just okay what's the pur purpose of this and even what's your purpose that that's more important to jeff bezos the founder of amazon he was worth 10 billion and he was driving an old rusty car why because i mean his vision is to provide ex like very good customer experience essentially create a big company and when you're building a big company, you just you need to focus all of your resources, and I mean mental resources, your focus to one and most important thing. You just don't have, you just, I just tell you, like, if you start acquiring more stuff, it just starts weighing down on you. If I, like, if you buy a car, then you're always thinking about the car. Okay, I, I bought a car and now you need to pay monthly payments and insurance and all, all this, all this stuff and maintenance and you need to drive it and change tires and like, there's so much stuff that, the more stuff you have, the less time you actually have to build your business, which in the first first place, yeah. So that's the first thing. But the, like, if you like having a car in the US, that's a necessity. If you're living in Europe, that's a different thing. So, 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 um, yeah. I guess like these were the main points that I wanted to cover um, in terms of basic financial management. Um, just be really cautious and think about the money that you're actually spending. One of the great habits that I did for four years, I stopped doing that because I wanted to focus more on other things. And I think I really mastered it already is that counting all the money you spend and earn, uh, spending money on 
like okay if you go to grocery store you buy this 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 then you just you just log it in and then you can see your monthly statements you spend this much on this this much on this and it kind of like okay you, you look back at it and maybe you were it will be you will be able to go for a certain expenses or some expenses and, and like ask yourself if those things are really necessary uh there is one great app for this the name of that app is spendy so you can just go and, and try it out if you want but yeah i just don't use it anymore because i just really want to focus on the most important stuff and and yeah and as i already said and also significantly pointed out in the past few episodes is that um, you just don't really need that much money in order to live like a just really sick life. It, it's all about your proactivity. It, it's it's not about how much money you need. It's all about w- what you can create with the money you have and resources you have. Even Tony Robbins said it once that it, it's not about resources you have. It's all about resourcefulness. Uh, even if you don't have, like, I bet you, if you, you could bring me, if I told you, like, if you told me that I should come with one in the next year or so with, with I should come with one million dollars or ten million dollars, I would I bet you I would come up with them, even if I didn't earn them myself. Like how? Because there are many people who have million dollars and they're just searching for be- the best opportunity to invest them into a venture capital or something. Yes, there are these opportunities. You just need to be a, a proactive and search for them. And even you don't need to search for the opportunities, you can create them. There are many people who are, okay, I have like many rich people are waiting for some ambitious young man who would be just willing to pitch them an idea. And even if he wouldn't take the idea, he would be actually become mentored by the guy. This is what happened to one of my friends. His name is Jacob and we're kind of um, in touch from time to time. He's working for Alex Hormozzi as his sales director. And he actually, maybe a lot of you know, know Alex Hormozzi. Um, he actually tried to sell something. He started washing cars of Alex Mahomuzi back back in Texas, maybe like four years ago or so. And the f- a few years ago, like a, like a bit bit later after that, a few months later, he went into his his house and actually pitched him an idea to start a software company because Alex had a uh, Hormozzi had a all the money back then, or like already had a lot of money there uh, then, and. Like Alex disagreed because the idea was like crap, but and then Alex just called him and uh, like offered him a job to work for him, or essentially like just work in sales. And after a few years, he just developed himself and became a different individual and like just became a way new person. And being mentored by Alex Hermosi, which is, which is one of like the the best uh, marketers out there currently and just the hottest figures, it's it's really great. And you can just get these opportunities by really being not being that shy and just going for what you really want. And all of these big players, as I already said, I told you, like I've met like a guy drove me in Bentley and like just all of these people are just, they're just so kind of kind to you. And even if you're young, like they, they just want to help you so freaking much because they just see the potential in you and, and the ambitionness. And even if you have a good value system, they just really want to help you because you, you're essentially going to make the world a better place. You're another entrepreneur who's here to make a change. So, yeah, just 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 a few thoughts, um, few feet, few pieces of thoughts that you can that you can use, and I'm just trying to think whether there's anything else that I would like to speak about in terms of financial management. But essentially, it's just about that being more mindful of the money you're spending on. Like, just create a goal, write down the goal that you, what you want, what you want to achieve, and then look at all the expenses that you've made in the past month, and then really think about okay whether these expenses are taking closer or, or further away from where you want to go. And it's always great to just have a lot of cash on on side. For example, I I I spend mul- I, I just keep multiple five figures on on my bank account. Just okay, like this is the cash. Like gunpowder, if something happens, I can just go full out. And if I just see an opportunity, I can go full out, hire a team and just do this, 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 this. And it's just so, so much, such an important, like just never get into debt and, and this. Like I didn't even speak about that. Like just, just keep out of debt, personal debt. But in terms of business, debt can be really good. But that's a different topic. And I guess that that's for financial, um, like just different financial, I would say, 
channels or so. And I like since I I live in the conditions where I live and I don't really even have experience with that uh, yet at the age of 22. So I would need to uh, like I'm, I, I guess I'm not the best and most qualified person to be speaking about, about that. Just to just to be very open with you. Yeah. So this pretty much summarizes it. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram. I um, sometimes have. Uh, sufficient time to respond to all the messages that I come that come to me because I just really want to help people and um, yeah just feel free to rate this show if you found it valuable and I'm gonna be seeing you in the next one have a great day bye